Welcome back to our video series on quantum mechanics. Today we'll be resuming our conversation on the WKB approximation. In our last session, we found that if we assume that our change in the potential was really small in comparison to the frequency of the wave function, we can make some assumptions about what the form of the wave function solution looked like. And we found that the wave function equals C over root P E to the I over H bar integral of P dx, where P represents momentum and is a function of x. We we're also able to make sense of wave functions of constant energy when the potential profile changed slowly, as summarized by this exercise. However, everything we looked at assumed a sinusoidal type of shape for the wave function, which meant that E minus V had to be positive. In other words, E always had to be greater than V. We ended our last video asking, what happens if E down here in pink becomes less than V in blue? Today we're going to issue a couple corrections to our wave function equation to allow for E being less than V and roughly think our way through what this means. So let's revisit the first potential energy profile we looked at from our last session. I've replicated that here, but now I've lowered the energy so that the, the energy actually becomes less than the potential energy at some point. And then I've drawn in red how we expect the wave function to operate from what we already know. We know that we're going to have small wavelengths where E minus V is large with increasing wavelengths until the point when E equals V, at which point we'll transition from a sinusoidal function to an exponentially decreasing function. And the exponential decay is reflected in the mathematics. If we recall last time we said that P equals the square root of 2m e minus v. So once we make that e minus v negative, this momentum is going to be imaginary. Hence, we need to make a correction to the equation. Instead of looking at the actual momentum, we're going to be just looking at the magnitude of the momentum. And that goes for both the denominator and for the exponent in e. Another change we're going to make is we're going to move the form of the equation from a sinusoidal form to an exponential form. So we're going to change this i up here to just a 1. So the real power of this approach is whether or not we have a sinusoidal or exponential type of function, we can represent it with two very similar equations. I should make two final adjustments with this equation. We can account for waves going to the propagating to the right and propagating to the left by putting a plus or minus in front of the IH. This will become important in our next video module when we start looking at tunneling. So in summary, whether or not E minus V is greater than zero or less than zero, we find that an equation of this form closely represents the actual wave equation. The one thing I do need to point out is that we haven't looked at what happens when E equals V. You can imagine E equals V, the momentum going to zero, and then the momentum being zero in the denominator of our wave equation and all sorts of hairy things happening. We'll address this situation later on in the chapter. I hope this video gives you a quick understanding of what to do when our sinusoidal model shifts over to an exponential model, and I'll see you next time when we look at tunneling.